Welcome to the Expert Guides Tutorial Services YouTube channel. I am Victor Kasing, one of the lecturers for Mathematics 1. To quickly introduce myself, my name is Victor Kasing. I am a current third year medical student at the University of Santo Tomas Faculty of Medicine and Surgery. I earned my pre-med degree, BS Biology, also in UST. I was a dean's lister in the entire academic year 2016 to 2017. I was able to research about the taxonomy and phytochemical properties of Anunnaze plants. I was also an executive assistant to the president of the College of Science Student Council. I was also part of the Junior Council Children's Museum and Library Incorporated. And during my high school years, I graduated among the top 10% of my batch. And lastly, I passed all big four college entrance exams. Hi, welcome to another session for Mathematics 1. Our topic for today is the four basic operations on decimals. So in adding and subtracting decimals, the very first thing that you have to do is to align the decimal points of whatever decimals you are adding or subtracting in a vertical fashion. And after doing so, you just simply perform the operation. So you either add or subtract. Let's take an example. Suppose you have 3.452 plus 1.25. So the first thing we did is we aligned the decimal points of 3.452 and 1.25 in a vertical fashion. And then we perform the operation. So adding, you get 4.702. Note also that this applies no matter how many decimal numbers you're adding. So suppose you're adding 5, 10, 15 decimal numbers. As long as you align all their decimal points in a vertical fashion, then you are good to go. In subtracting, let's take this example. Suppose you have 5.893 minus 3.371. So again, we align the decimal points in a vertical fashion, and then we perform the operation. Thus, we have 2.522. Note also that this applies even if you're subtracting a small number to a larger number. So let's say the numbers here are reversed. Let's say you're subtracting 3.371 minus 5.893. So as long as again, you align the decimal points in a vertical fashion, then you are good to go. And again, this also applies even if you're subtracting many decimals at the same time. So to multiply decimals, it is important to set aside first the decimal point, then align the numbers to the right, and finally, simply multiply the numbers just like whole numbers. So basically, wag mo munang pansinin yung decimal points, you align all the numbers that you are multiplying to the rightmost side, and then you perform the operation. And then, the total number of decimal places of the factors will be the number of decimal places of the product. So since you are multiplying decimal numbers, of course, your answer would also be a decimal number with a decimal point. And the position of that decimal point would depend on the number of decimal places of the factors. So let's take an example. Suppose we have 3.54 times 4.3. So we disregard first the decimal point, and then we align everything to the rightmost side. So this is the rightmost side, so we align them all together here. So notice also that this is different in adding and subtracting. Kasi sa adding and subtracting, we are aligning the numbers based on their place value. So ones aligns with ones, tens aligns with uh, tens in a vertical fashion. However, here, we don't care about the place values as long as we align all the factors to the rightmost side. So here's the rightmost side. Kaya ganito yung itsura ng equation natin. Then after doing so, we just multiply as, uh, as it is. So multiplying everything, we have 1, 5, 2, 2, 2. 
But since we are multiplying decimal numbers, of course, our answer would also be a decimal number with a decimal point. So to, de to determine where that deci point, decimal point would be, we just count the decimal places we have in our factors. So for 3.54, this is our decimal point, and we count the decimal uh, values after the decimal point. So we have 5 and then 4. So we have 2 for the first factor. And then we have 1 for the second factor for 4.3. So adding them all together, 2 decimal uh, values plus 1 decimal value would give you 3 decimal place values. So in our answer, we count 3 decimal values starting from the rightmost again. So take note, rightmost. So we start here. Then 1, 2, 3. So that's where we put our decimal point, giving us the final answer of 15.222. So note also that this applies even if one of your uh, factors is a decimal and the other is not. So let's say you're multiplying 3.54 times 43. So again, you just align to the rightmost side. And then you multiply as is, and then you count the decimal places. So what I'm trying to say is that as long as there is one decimal number in your factors, your answer would always and always be a decimal number as well. So you have to count the decimal places of your factors to get the final decimal number product. And then finally, for dividing decimals, if the divisor is a decimal number, move the decimal point to the right to transform it into a whole number. The number of places that the decimal point moves to the right will also be done on the dividend. So basically, kung gaano karami gumalaw yung decimal point sa divisor natin, ganun karami din yung igagalaw ng decimal point ng dividend natin. So let's take an example. Suppose we have 0 0.3985 divided by 0 0.25. So we, we first write the equation as it is. And then since our divisor has a um, decimal values of 2, we need to move 2 places to the right. So as you can see here, 0 0.25, so two decimal places, we move 1, 2. That's why 25 na siya dito. And then at the same time, since we move two decimal places on our divisor, we will also move two decimal places on our dividend. So 1, 2. That's why we have 39.85. And then we can now divide just like dividing whole numbers. So we have 1.594 as our final answer. Notice also that this will only work if your divisor is a decimal number. So suppose you have 0 0.3985 divided by 25. So you don't have to move the decimal point anymore because your divisor is already a whole number. So what I'm trying to say is that ayaw nating mag-divide ng may divisor na decimal. That's why we are moving the decimal point. Pero if your divisor is already a whole number, regardless if your dividend is a decimal number or not, then you can divide as it is already. So ang important lang talaga is yung divisor natin, hindi siya decimal. So yung dividend, uh, wala tayong pakialam kung uh, decimal ba siya or hindi. Ang important is yung divisor. And that ends today's lecture. If you want to learn more, you can contact the numbers for enrichment and college entrance exam review services. If you want more lecture videos, you can access our social media platforms via Facebook or you can like and subscribe this YouTube channel. Thank you and stay safe.